right? Once you notice what it says in verse 19 of Proverbs chapter 18, it says, A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. And so uh, that verse right there, I think any of us, if you've been around for any length of time, you know just how true that is, how when you offend somebody, it is very hard to win them back. It is very hard to make things right. And I think it's especially difficult today because we live in a society where we are taught it's a virtue to be offended, where people literally go on the news to find out what's supposed, you know, who said something that should offend them. People go on social media constantly expressing their outrage over everything and we are offended by everything. We are given special victim status if we are offended, taking away all accountability from our life. Brother Chris sent me a video last night of some guy attacking the street preacher guy, and the guy was screaming and just spazzing out and just cussing the guy out. Just And, and he said, your sign is offensive. So then it's like, don't look at it. You know, I mean, but people today, they are, they are being, and this was at a college campus, and they are being trained in these college campuses that should probably be known as mental institutions anymore on how to get offended. And they are just, the, you know, they've got their safe spaces and all this stuff. And so this is the generation that we have today. I think we're more easily offended than ever. And Wednesday night, we were going through Matthew chapter, I believe it was Matthew chapter 18. And we were talking about how we need, to, how important it is for us to avoid offending people. And especially offending them to where we stop them from coming to Christ. We do not want to do that. It should not be our goal to offend people. We should not desire to offend people. We should have every desire in our heart to give none offense to the Jew, the Gentile, nor to the church of God. But at the end of the day, we just need to understand that there are some things that we just can't help. There are some things, and we're going to talk about today, things that are offensive about Christianity, about biblical Christianity, there are some things that are just offensive to this world, and I do not believe we have been called to change these things because they are offensive. I do not believe God is pleased when pastors go and gay up the gospel and gay up their church services and stuff to try to be more appealing to this gay generation, for lack of a better term. God's not okay with that. Obviously, there's going to be some things that are going to offend people, but again, that's not our goal. But remember, to, uh, we need to make sure we're on the same page when it comes to an offense. Because an offense, it's like a stumbling block or something that gets in your way. That can be good and it can be bad. In Matthew 16, 22, it says, Then Peter took him, talking about Jesus, and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So Peter was getting in the way of Christ's mission. He was being an offense. He's being a stumbling block, a hindrance. But then in Psalms 119, verse 165 says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Now this does not, this verse does not mean people who love God's law do not take offense to anything. There are many things that I find offensive. But I, that doesn't mean I have to let them offend me or stop me. There are things that often get in our way. Remember when we used to have to deal with the obstacles of the mask police at Walmart? They were an offense. Most of the time, I got right through those people. And I did not let them offend me. I did not let them stop me. Now, where I did get offended several times was Menards. There were times that they stopped me. And I, just, I would get mad and I would leave some places. I did not get to where I wanted to go because there was an offense in my way and I just wasn't able to get over it. And I was like, I can't do it. Now, there were times, you know, I might have compromised like at airports and stuff. And even though that was offensive to me that they wanted me to wear a mask on a plane, you know what I did? I got over it and I wore the stupid thing. And, and, and so in that case, it did not offend me. So do you all understand that there's going to be, you can love God's law and many things can and even should be offensive to you, but don't let it offend you. Don't let it stop you from doing what you're supposed to do. And as Christians, as people who are trying to bring people to Christ, we definitely don't want to put an offense in people's way or something that will prevent them from coming to Christ. 
But at the same time, there are some things that we cannot change. We have no authority to change. These are things that are just truth. These are things that are Bible that are offensive to much of our world. And when that kind of offense comes, there's really nothing we can do about it. We just got to keep doing the right thing. But I think it's important that we recognize these things because there is, we've got a new generation. They are so aware of the criticism. And they're so aware of what people say on social media that they are trying to remove the offenses. But the problem is they're removing truth in the process. And in reality are creating a greater offense because they're leading people the wrong way. So they're not accomplishing. We don't accomplish anything by removing these offenses that are in fact God's will, that are biblical. But let's just understand, we don't need to fall into this trap of thinking because there's a group out there that says we are offensive and we do offend them, that we need to change anything. We, sh we don't need to change these things. We can't help it. This is not us being offensive. There's a big difference between me being offensive because I get out of line, me being offensive because I sin, and then something being offensive because of Christ and the Bible. That's not my fault. That's not me being offensive. If I am preaching the unfiltered truth of the Word of God, that is not me being offensive. That is the Word of God being an offense, and that's not my problem. Okay? Now, if I get up here and I get in the flesh, you know, and I do, and I just start being ignorant about it, that's me being offensive. And, and that's, that's a different story. But we don't want to, but the, uh, an offense is only sinful if it is something that is hindering someone from that which is right. Okay, and so the truth is there are some offenses that are good. You know, that um, there are some things we want hindering us. There are things, we do want certain roadblocks. And, you know, aren't you thankful for guardrails in some places and things like that? You know, those things are nice because, you know, they'll keep us from uh, getting hurt. They'll keep us from, just, you know, destroying ourselves. And so what we're going to talk about today, though, are offensive things that are not sinful. And there are, there are many things about Christianity that sinful people do not like. And we do live in a world where people constantly express outrage by things that are biblical. And while we have no desire to offend people, we just need to understand people will be offended they need to get over it. And, you know, we ought to try to help them get over it. Did you know a lot of people get offended by us knocking on their door and asking them that offensive question, if you die today, are you sure you go to heaven? A lot of people get offended by that. That's not our goal. Right? That's not our goal. We try to be as tactful as possible when it comes to these things. But at the end of the day, what are we going to do? For fear of offending people, not tell anybody? Because the fact is, a lot of people aren't offended by it, and a lot of people get saved because we do it. And just because there's going to be some people who find it offensive doesn't mean we need to throw it out. Okay? You know, yesterday, I had some people, you're not supposed to be soliciting here. I said, we're not, solic we're not solicitors, we're not soliciting. They're like, we understand what you are, but you're not supposed to be doing it here. I was like, well, actually, we can do it, but, you know, it, it was kind of an apartment a complex area. And I just said, listen, I'm not going to bother if you don't want anything. You know, but I, I just went to the next house. If people don't want to talk, I'm not going to bother them. I wasn't a jerk. I want to be. You know, when, when people get that way, my nature wants to argue. My, you know, I, I want to go back up a little bit on the, on the public sidewalk. And I'm like, public sidewalk, free speech, what are you going to do? And just start preaching right there. That's what I want to do. I would love to do that. You know, and if I did that, of course, you know, obviously nobody does something like that just to get people saved. They do it to film themselves. You know, I have somebody film it, put it on YouTube, goes viral and all that kind of stuff. People, oh, you're so bold. You're so brave. You're not afraid. No, I'm being offensive. Do you, do you really think I'm going to get these people saved after they've told me to leave and then I just go and I'm obnoxious like that? That's, that's not effective. I would be being offensive, but I, I have the right. I have the American right to do that, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. We don't want to offend people, but... We're not going to stop knocking doors because some people find that offensive. A lot of your trendy churches today that are a lot more seeker sensitive, they don't do that because they don't want to get a negative reputation in, in the town. But again, what would you rather have the reputation for knocking on people's doors or just doing nothing? You know, they're, they're more worried about offending them here on earth than they are them being offended and angry at them when they're in hell one of these days. No one I lived right within sight of a church and they never one time tried to bring me to Christ. I, don't, I definitely don't want that. 
And so let's avoid being offensive as much as possible, but sometimes it's not possible. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do it all to the glory of God. And so this is in, uh, in context with what we eat and what we drink. Hey, do all to the glory of God. Give none offense, neither the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Biblically, I am allowed to eat bacon, but if I'm going to go somewhere and it's going to offend the people if I eat bacon, I should not eat the bacon. You know why? Because I don't want to be an offense. I am not commanded to eat bacon. I wish I was, because I can obey that commandment. But at the same time, I'm not commanded to eat it. I'm not commanded not to eat it. That is up to a person's conscience. But again, let's not be offensive about it. If I'm trying to win over vegans, I don't need to go showing up at their house eating a hamburger in their face. Now, if I see them protesting a meat store, I might eat the burger in their face in that situation like that. I'm not out soloing during that time. I've seen people do that before, and that brings me great joy. When I've seen those videos of people eating burgers in front of vegan protests, I, I love that. But I, I'm not, I'm not going to do that when I'm out soul winning. Maybe when I'm out being political. <laughs> but when I, not, not when I'm out soul winning. But there are, there are some things about Christianity that's going to be offensive. And he, you want to know what the first one is? This is the big offensive thing about Christianity, and it's Jesus. Jesus Bible says in Romans 9, 33, as it is written, behold, I lay in Sion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. And whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Jesus is referred to as a rock of offense. And let me tell you, Jesus, the name of Jesus, offends many people in our world today. They find Jesus very offensive for many different reasons. But folks, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the Savior of the world. Jesus is the only hope of every man that is out there today. And just because many people find him offensive, it doesn't mean we stop talking about Jesus. Unfortunately, they just need to get over it. They need to just come to grips with the truth that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Savior. He is going to judge them one of these days. And they need to come to Him and ask for forgiveness. And they need to believe on Him for salvation. There's no two ways about it. It doesn't matter. It's an, he's an offense, but it's one that they could get over. It's one that they could get over. But the truth is, there's many things about Jesus that's offensive. For one, you want to know one of the things that are offensive about Jesus? The simplicity of the gospel. That's That's offensive. To many people. 1 Corinthians 1.21 For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. You know, we don't find truth from the geniuses, from the great minds, from the Stephen Hawking's and people like that. That's not where we find true wisdom. The Bible says, you know where you can find the true wisdom? You know where you can find truth? You can find it from the foolishness of preaching. You are more likely, and I'm not trying to brag, this is not about me, this is what God has chosen to use. You are more likely to find truth in a place like this from a guy like me than you are going to some convention of geniuses out there. If you go to the convention of geniuses, you know what you're going to hear there? Evolution, billions and billions of years ago. You come from an amoeba. You know, monkeys are our ancestors and things like that. that that's what you're going to hear from those people, and they're going to sound smart. They can probably do math equations that I don't even know how to say. But at the same time, you know what? They're on their way to hell. Some of the greatest minds, they're on their way to hell. We look at a lot of our great minds, too, throughout history, the people who have run nations and things, too. You know, you find out about a lot of these people when you look into their lives, too. A lot of these people were perverts and stuff, too. They had some very anti-God beliefs and were uh, and involved in some very wicked things. But the reality is, God uses the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign. We've got a whole culture of people, they want to see some kind of sign as proof for what they're going to believe, for what they are going to trust in. Show us the signs, they demand. But you know what? God doesn't use signs for them. The Greeks seek after wisdom. And we do. We've got a lot of those people in the world today. Give me the wisdom. Show, I, I want to hear what the smartest guy has to say, and I'll listen to that guy, but that's not who God uses. And Paul goes on to say, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block, 
and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Jesus Christ is offensive to Jews and Greeks. He's offensive, but you know what? He also is the only hope of salvation for Jews and Greeks. And we know even today, the name of Jesus, I mean, they are, they are this close to adding it to what uh, the definition of anti-Semitism, to mention Jesus. Because that implies, you know, you, you mentioned following Jesus, you mentioned being the Son of God, that implies that the Jews killed Jesus. That implies that the Jews are not the people of God. That implies all these things that are offensive to the Jews, that they have been wrong for the last 2,000 years. That implies that build, them building another temple one of these days is pointless if Jesus Christ was the final sacrifice for sins. You're saying that they rejected their Messiah. You're saying that they've got judgment coming their way. That is offensive. The name of Jesus is offensive to the Jews, but He is also their Messiah. He is their only Savior. He is their only hope of salvation. And you know what? I'm not I don't want to try to be offensive. I'm not going to do like the lady with the Israeli flag skirt going downtown in Jerusalem screaming, Yeshua is your Messiah. It's Yeshua is your Messiah and screaming all that stuff at her. I'm not, I'm not going to do it like that. But you know what? When I, get, if I, when I get opportunities to talk to Jews, I am not going to hesitate to use the name of Jesus. I am not going to hesitate to tell them how He is the Messiah. He is their Savior. He is their only hope that they cannot achieve righteousness. I tried, when I, when I interviewed that rabbi, I wanted to talk with him. He didn't want to talk about it after we got done because he was talking, he, he mentioned in, in, his, uh, in that interview how the reason the Jews were kicked out of the land is because the law required a high level of righteousness that they were not able to achieve. And... I, and I'm just thinking, man, that's so right. Now, here's how you achieve that righteousness. Not through the law, but through the faith of Jesus Christ. You need cleansing, not from the blood of a lamb from a temple. You need cleansing from the blood of Jesus Christ who you slew outside the gate. That's what you need. Then you'll have that righteousness, and then you can have possession of that land. But, you know, they don't want to hear it, and they get offended by that. And then you have Christians, Christians who get offended for them when you talk about Jesus, well, I'm sorry, I'm not going to talk, quit talking about Jesus. I'm not going to quit talking about Jesus. I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm not saying his name to be offensive, but the name of Jesus is offensive to many people. Another thing that's offensive about Christ, too, is the fact that salvation is about his works and not our own works. That's offensive to a lot of people. You know why? Because a lot of people think they're really good. A lot of people think that they're you know, their faithfulness to church, their works have been enough to earn them. And when you come along and tell them, it's like, no, you still deserve to go to hell. They find that offensive. We're not trying to be jerks. It's just reality. Galatians 5.11, And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. The, the offense of the cross. The cross is offensive. Why is that? You know why? Because that cross, it's a symbol of the work of Jesus Christ. It's a symbol of what he did and not what we did. The Jews, the thing that Paul is specifically dealing with, they like to talk about the circumcision. That was something that they did in their flesh. But God said, no, it's not about what you do in your flesh. It's about what Jesus did in his flesh on the cross. He is the payment for sins. And that was offensive to many of them. But guess what? It's the truth. It is absolutely the only way. But people want to share in the credit. They want to somehow think that they're better than other people, but it's just not going to work. Another thing that's offensive about Jesus, and this is something many, many people are offended by, and that is the fact that Jesus is the only way to heaven. That's offensive. People, oh, well, you're, you're alienating all the Muslims. You're alienating all the Jews and all the Hindus and all these people from, you know, in China and they have all these other religions. You're saying that these people aren't going to go to heaven? Yes. Yes, because the Bible says in Acts 4.11, this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Folks, there's no other name. Oh, well, you know, all the religions basically serve the same God. They just call him by other names. Do you know that's so less offensive to people? 
You know, if I go down the news media and say stuff like that, nobody will be offended except Bible believers. But people love hearing that kind of thing. They love when the Pope gets together with the leaders of other religions. We all basically worship the same God. People love when Billy Graham would say things along those lines. But the reality is there is none other name under heaven given among men. You can try to call Jesus whatever you want. It's not going to work. It's not going to matter. Jesus Christ, he is the name above all names. He is the only way. And people find that offensive. Now, they shouldn't. What did the angel say when Jesus was born? Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Jesus came for all the world. Even many Christians today act like, you know, you shouldn't say Merry Christmas to the Jews. You need to say Happy Hanukkah. Why? Did Jesus not come for the Jews? Are they not included with all people that Jesus Christ came for? You better believe I'm going to say Merry Christmas to the Jews. I'm not trying to be offensive, but they need to acknowledge Jesus Christ. He came, he came for them just as much as he came for me. And I'm, not going, I'm, I'm never going to hesitate from using the name of Christ. And it is. It's, a sad, it's sad that other nations have, uh, you know, that there's not been much light there, that they have been able to kind of suppress that light and they've persecuted Christians and they've accepted other gods. And, and these are very dark places as a result of it, but it doesn't change the fact Jesus is still their only hope. The fact that, you know, we are blessed in this country to have many Christians and to be able to use the name of Christ freely, that is a great blessing. But folks, this isn't a racial thing. This isn't an American thing. They try to make it like, you know, we, you know, Ameri we think Americans are better. No, anything better about us is because of Jesus Christ. And he could save them too. And unfortunately in our country, you know, we're losing a lot of the light that we have. And part of that too is because even so-called Christians, many of them are trying to not be offensive but the very name of Jesus Christ is offensive. The way of salvation is offensive. The simplicity of salvation, the fact that it's only Jesus, it is offensive. The fact that the gospel of Jesus points out the reality of your sinfulness is also offensive to our world. What does it say in John 3, 18? He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. People do not like being reminded of the truth of their sin. They, they would rather remain in darkness and understand bringing Jesus Christ brings light. That light exposes their sin. That light exposes the reality of what's going on. It, get, it, it, sh it shines truth on their lives. And many people, because they love their sin so much, they don't want to see this. They don't want to hear about it, and they find it offensive because he does. He points out their sinfulness. And you know what? One of the things that we get nailed for all the time as Bible-believing Christians is you people are so hateful. Why? Because we say things are sinful. Because we say there are some things that are abominations, that they are wicked. Because we say God's going to judge the world one of these days for these things. And we're considered hateful because what, what are we doing? We're just shining the light. Hey, this is, this is filthy. This is an abomination. You should not be doing this. This is a wicked, vile, disgusting sin. And that's, but that's not us being offensive. That's the Word of God being offensive. And let me tell you something. You know, one of the ways we can help when it comes to the offensiveness of these things, especially the fact that the gospel shines a light on people's sin, don't make your righteousness the focal point. Don't make it about, well, look how much better we are than you fornicators out there. That's not what it's about. It's about not only the way that we shine the light on their sinfulness is not by showing how different we are from them, but by showing how different Jesus is from all of us. And we need to remember too, even on your best day, no matter how moral, no matter how religious you are, you still need Jesus. And so this is not about highlighting our righteousness. We don't do that stuff. No, it's about highlighting Jesus. It's about keeping him the focal point. Because again, I don't want to be offensive, but people are going to get offended enough just by that. But let's make sure we keep Jesus the focal point and let him be the offensive one, not us. Let's not get in the way. And so, Remember this too, it is a fake Jesus that never offends anyone.
Because what is it we hear all the time whenever we offend people? Well, that's not very Christ-like. Have you ever read the Bible? Why do you think they killed him? You know why? Because he offended them. He talked about their sin. You want to know why John the Baptist got his head cut off? Because he told Pharaoh it was not lawful for him to have his brother's wife. And his wife got really offended by it. Pharaoh did, or Herod didn't get offended by it, but his wife got offended by it. And he ended up dying as a result of it. Why do you think the apostles spent so much time in jail? Why do you think Paul got beat up so many times? You know why? He offended people. And that's the guy who wrote, give none offense to the Jew, to the Gentile, to the church of God. But when Paul offended people, it wasn't really Paul offending people. It was the message offending people. It was the gospel offending people. And it is. It's offensive. It's offensive. But again, if you just like offending people, just we've got enough right in here that will offend people. You don't need to be offensive yourself. Let's, uh, let us try to not be offensive. Here's another thing that's offensive. Is our liberty in Christ. Which is what, the con what Paul was talking about too when he talked about not giving offense to the Jew, the Gentile, the Church of God. Not using our liberty, our ability to eat whatever we want. As, you know, don't let that be a stumbling block to someone. He said in verse 23 of 1 Corinthians 10, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. So again, it's just, there, are, there are things that we can do, but, and, and while in America, we don't have to worry about the dietary stuff offending people much, in some countries, that's a big thing. In some religions, that's a big deal. In our culture, you know, thankfully, I pretty much freely eat bacon wherever I go, and I don't think I ever really offend anybody. Okay? But you know, there might be some places I, I, need, I need to watch myself. But... Uh, our liberty in Christ offends people. Our eternal security offends a lot of people. You know, and here, and here, you want to know why eternal security offends so many people? Because they don't understand their own sinfulness. That's why it offends people. But Titus 3, 5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying. Now these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These are good and profitable unto men. And here's what's offensive to many people about eternal security. Many people feel that it is unfair that Good people can go to hell while bad people can go to heaven. And that's how they interpret it in their mind. Oh, wait, so you're telling me that guy, just because he believed on Christ, but he's not a very good husband, he's not a very good Christian, he, you know, he's, he's a terrible worker, he can't even keep a job, he's got all of these personal problems in his life, and that sweet old grandma that goes to Mass every week, does all her sacraments, always does her confessions, you're telling me she's going to go to hell because she just believed the wrong thing? That's how they take it. So they see it as a good person going to hell and a bad person going to heaven, not realizing just how sinful we all are. The Bible is very clear. It is very foolish for us to compare ourselves among ourselves. That sweet old grandma, that good person as you would call her, is a filthy sinner in the eyes of a holy God. And you know what? The good, independent, fundamental Baptist is a filthy, rotten sinner in the eyes of God. And so some of us, we, we do. We understand what the Bible teaches about the sinfulness of man. And so we recognize the truth that yes, a bad person can go to heaven, but we also understand we're all bad. We understand we're bad now. Hey, I don't care how much reformation you had in your life after you got saved, and thank God for that reformation. All these good works you're doing now are good and profitable to men. They are. They, they will give you a better life on this earth, but they don't earn you one second in heaven. No, it's only by His grace that we are in heaven, and we need to constantly remind the sorry people that go to all our churches that, you know what, you need to start doing some good works. Why? Because we want to be a blessing to humanity. We don't want to be offensive to humanity. But at the end of the day, we're all still sorry people. We're all still rotten people in the eyes of a holy God. And, uh, and sometimes we are. We are offensive. And it's just us being offensive. But the reality is, if you understand the truth, we get while, you know, we, we get this stuff. But many people are offended by it. And eternal security is offensive 
to many people. And I think this is where how we present the Gospel is important. We've got to be very careful how we communicate. Here's, here's another, I, I preached a message a few weeks ago about learning their language. One thing that can be difficult for us talking to other religions is other religions use a lot of the same words and terms that we do, but they use them very differently than we do. And it's very important we communicate clearly what we mean. And this is why, too, we shouldn't have a self-righteous and holier-than-thou attitude. When we go up to somebody's house and you see those beer cans on the porch, I ain't how we do it as Baptists, amen. You know, that's, that's not really the time. That, that's, not, that's not what we're, we're there for. You know, we don't want to have that kind of attitude. This is why, too, we don't want to have a self-righteous, holier-than-thou attitude, but we don't want to act like a heathen at the same time. We're not going to accomplish more by showing these people, we're just, hey, we're just like you. Hey, I'll drink one of your beers with you. And I'm still going to go to heaven because of eternal security. That's not, how we, that's not what we're supposed to do. The grace of God that brings salvation teaches us to deny it ungodliness and worldly lust and live soberly that's what it teaches us so i'm not going to go to heaven because i'm sober but i'm going to stay sober because i'm going to go to i'm going to heaven that's what we ought to do and we don't want to act like we're better but let's not join in the sin as, as a way to win them over that's not going to accomplish anything and so another thing that's offensive about christianity is the persecution that comes our way listen the persecutors are not going to go away the devil is going to use them for a twofold reason. One, to try to discourage us, but also to discourage others from doing what we're doing. To discourage others from saying what we're saying. There are people out there who like to regularly try to expose what we teach, and they have figured out that we don't give a rip. You know, we really don't care. You know, thank you for promoting our church. But they like, you know, they like riling up the mob against us, knowing that there are many people out there who are cowards and they'll see the negative stuff coming our way and they'll be like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. And so that, that's why they do these things. And understand, persecution is offensive to, to many people. It says in Matthew eleven six, 6, And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. But unfortunately, many Christians, they get offended and they give up. Matthew 13, 20. But he that received the seed in stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it, yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by, and he is offended. That persecution because of the word. Okay, If we get persecuted because of the word, you know what? We ought to leap for joy when that happens. Now, if you're getting persecuted because you're just a sorry individual, you know, you ought to pray the Lord will help you stop being a sorry individual and show mercy. But if it's just because of the word, you know what? Thank God for it. But many people, when that happens, you know what they do? They become unfruitful. They quit. They give up. That, that's why they do these things. You want to know why bad preacher clips on Twitter doesn't want to share my preacher clips? Because they know I don't care. They know it's not going to stop me. They know it's not going to get me to tone it down. But you know what it does do to a lot of preachers? Cause them to take their YouTube channels off. Ta cause them to stop live streaming their services. Password protect their sermons. It caused them to hide their light under a bushel. And so they see the, all the people that are reacting that way to it. And those are the ones they're going to they're, they're go after and that they're going to mess with. But uh, the, the ones who are going to get offended. But you know what? We can't let persecution offend us. Matthew 24, 9, And they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Many people get offended by persecution. And, said, and the devil does that. One, he does want to hurt us. He does want to destroy us. But even if the devil himself knows he's not going to stop us, you know what? He does know if he persecutes us, it might discourage others from doing the same thing. And so many people see the persecution that true Christians deal with, and they say, I don't want to have anything to do with that. That is offensive to them. But folks, we're going to be persecuted. We're, we're not going to be able to get away with it. John 16, 1, These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. Why would we be offended? They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he do with God's service. Getting put out of the synagogue was a big deal then. Getting killed has always been a big deal. So they're going to do that to you. 
And these things they will do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. So Jesus is warning them, because he's like, I don't want you to be offended when this happens. Because persecution often offends people, and true Christians often get persecuted, and that is offensive to many people. Many people, they want to follow the person or the group that everyone loves. That's what they want. And many people when, and, and that have been in many churches, whenever persecution has come on that church because they were preaching the truth, you know what a lot of people did? They took off. They left. They got out. You know, they were offended. They were offended. But folks, never bail on Christians for be, that are being persecuted. Don't be ashamed of their chain. Paul talked about those who were not ashamed of his chain. They were willing to refresh him. They were willing to be an encouragement to him, even though he was suffering, even though he was in prison. You know, if you got a guy like Paul in prison, do you want to be the guy visiting? The government's going to look at him like, who, who are these people? Are they doing the same thing? Are they teaching the same stuff he's teaching? That's just going to get you on their radar. And many people are like that. They see those that are out there preaching the truth, doing the right thing. Oh, I don't want to get connected with these people. Then I'm going to get on their radar too. You know what? If we were all doing it, they can't keep track of all of us. You know what? Let's not be ashamed. When you see somebody being persecuted for right, I'm not talking about being persecuted for being an idiot. A lot of people are getting persecuted for being an idiot. A lot of the preachers on bad sermons, they're getting persecuted for saying some dumb stuff. Some bad stuff. But you know what? Sometimes, when I see people getting persecuted for preaching the truth and not being an idiot, I want to be supportive of those people. I want to send encouragement to them because I don't want them to be offended. And I don't want other people to be offended. I think it's good to see a bunch of support going to those people so others will not be offended because persecution is offensive to many people. But you know, another reason, thing that's offensive about Christianity is just some Bible doctrines, and there are some difficult passages of Scripture that are not what we want to hear. In John 6.60, Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? But when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? Do you know, there's a lot of stuff that's right there in the law that's offensive. There are some churches, they avoid 20, Leviticus 20.13 like the plague. You know why? Because it's offensive. Leviticus 18.28, it's offensive. You know, thou shalt not commit adultery, that's offensive. You know, the death penalty stuff, It's offensive. You know, and then, and then two, love thy neighbor. That's hard. You know, that, that's a hard saying. We really love your enemies, really. Pay your taxes, really. We got to, we got to do these things. That's offensive to a lot of people. But you know what? It's what the Bible teaches. And so, you know, what we can do to help in these situations is, you know, we do need to take the time to make sure we know, you know, what, uh, you know, these passages mean, what they teach and learn to teach them to others with patience. And that's another thing, too, we got to work on as independent fundamental Baptists. There's a lot of things that we have learned, that we have accepted, that we have embraced. But, you know, a lot of these things were very difficult. I was just talking about somebody uh, recently uh, from my old church that I, that I didn't know this about them, but they had gotten saved. And when they got into church, you know, they were really changing their life. They're listening to all the preaching. And I, I, I can't remember how long they've been there, but I was talking to the wife. And she was telling me how hard many things had been for because before she got saved, she was a feminist. I never, I, I, I wouldn't have pegged that, pegged her for one. But yeah, she's like, I was a very militant feminist. And submitting to my husband has been difficult. But, but she's been doing it. You know, that, that kind of, listen, the Bible is very clear. Wives, obey your husbands. But you know, it's okay for us to be patient with ladies who have been brainwashed for years with that garbage if they get into church. You know, it's okay for us to be patient with them and you know, care about them if people aren't dressing the way they ought to, talking the way they should. It's okay for us to be patient. You know, let's never be one of these churches where we are all threatened by someone who comes in here and does something a little bit different than we do. Oh my goodness, I mean, did you see what, you know, that wife's, that's all our wives are going to start doing that if that guy doesn't get his wife under control. Well, speak for yourself. Okay, you know, just let's learn to be patient with people. Let's learn, you know, let's learn to 
uh, you know, have some grace and understand some of us grew up being raised this way, but it's hard. There are many things that are very offensive, and it is. It's the Word of God being offensive, but that, I don't see anywhere in the Bible where we are told we can't be patient. In fact, I'm, I'm shown where we're supposed to be in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. We ought to do it with meekness, with patience, with temperance. I could preach a whole message just on that. I'm not going to do it. But some commands from the Scripture, especially the ones that are completely contrary to culture, are offensive. You know, but you know, again, great peace have they which love thy law. If you love God's law, you're not going to be offended by Leviticus 20.13. You're not going to be offended by those things. You're not going to be offended by Deuteronomy 22.5. You're not going to be offended by these things if you actually do love the law of God. But understand, just because you got saved doesn't mean all of a sudden you're just going to love the law just like that. You know, you got to develop that sometimes. It takes work. It takes time. You got to, it's, people need to give God a chance to you know, prove himself, to prove his way is better, and you start obeying those things and watch God start blessing your life. And let me tell you, when you do, when you start taking those commands in the scriptures that kind of go against your nature, and you're like, you know what, I'm just going to trust God and I'm going to do it, you're going to be surprised. God's going to bless you. You know what's going to happen? You're going to be like, you know what, I think I'm going to start trying some more of this law. This is good stuff. This is making my life better. God knew what he was talking about. But that all takes time. It all takes time. And at first, it's going to be offensive. So what we can do to help with this is when it comes to God's law, we need to obey it ourselves and do it with joy. It's like when, when you get offered that alcohol, oh, I'm a Baptist, I can't. No, don't, don't act like that stinks. That's good. You know, don't, you know let, obey it with joy. You know, ladies, when a, another lady sees you submitting to your husband, <sighs> Paul, he said... Wives, submit yourselves to your husband, and I'm a Christian, so I got I to listen to this idiot. Oh, wait, I forgot I'm supposed to be respectful, too. My Lord. Don't do it that way. That's not, that, that's not going to accomplish anything. You're just going to help keep it offensive. Just obey it and do it with joy. Obey it by yourself, if necessary. Obey it when no one else is doing it. And also, don't look down on others who are not everything you are. That will help very much. When you do, when you're obeying something and somebody notices it and then they don't just conform to your way right away, don't look down on those people. Don't look down on it. No, you just keep doing what you're supposed to do because it's what you're supposed to do and let God deal with them. Let God deal with them and just be patient with them. Again, there are, there are so many things that are going to be offensive to our world that's right out of our King James Bible. I, there are verses I can get up and read and not even do any commentary and I can offend people. But it's, at the same time, that's not my fault. That's just Christianity. That's what it is. And so offenses are real and offenses can be strong. Everyone has been offended by something. Everybody stumbled at something in their life with the exception of Jesus Christ. When Peter got in his way, he was an offense to him, but Peter did not stop Jesus from doing what he was supposed to do. Jesus went to the cross. He fulfilled his Father's will. And we don't want to let anything offend us. And even if you've been saved for a long time, listen, I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how spiritual you think you are. I don't care how hardcore of an independent fundamental Baptist you think you are. You are regularly going to find yourself facing situations where obeying God and, what, and God's Word is going to be offensive to you. This is a tough situation, and obedience is going to be difficult. There, you are going to have times where you are going to have to have faith. You're going to, your faith is going to be tested, and we are all going to face offenses. That is just what Christianity is, and we cannot buy into this culture of victims. We cannot, be, we cannot become one of these people who think something is bad just because it is offensive. There are many good things that are offensive, Jesus is an offense. Here's what our job is to do. When we find an offense, whether it be a good thing or a bad thing, you know what we need to do? We need to get over it. We literally need to overcome it. We need to conquer it. We need to do what God said to do because offenses are just a reality of life. I have not figured out the key to just smooth sailing 
and your entire life. I don't see that anywhere in the Bible. I don't see that in the life of Christ. I don't see that in the life of his disciples. I don't see that in the life of the greats from the Old Testament. Go ask Job about smooth sailing. He's not, his life was, definitely wasn't smooth sailing. And so it is. It's going to be a, your life will be a series of offenses, but it's okay. We can overcome these things. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your word and the promises that it gives us and the hopes, the warnings. We thank you for all these things, dear God. And I pray you'll help us to uh, remember these things. Help us to make sure we are not the ones that are uh, an offense to other people. But I pray you'll help us to be compassionate towards those who do find you and your word offensive. And I pray that you'll uh, help us to be a light and to love them and to win them over to you. In your name we pray. Amen.